Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in and for this video I'm going to be doing a step-by-step -step poppies in a field. It's going to be quite simple but it's going to have lots of yummy techniques. I'm going to be spattering, I'm going to be masking out, I'm going to be using my twig and all sorts of great techniques. If you've got any questions about the techniques I'm using please contact me in the comments section below this video. So let's get started, shall we? So here is the wonderful reference photo I'm gonna be using from the amazing pexels.com and a link for that will be in the description below. So here are all the materials I'm going to be using and I'm using the Windsor & Newton Field watercolour box which I absolutely love but I'll also be using the masking pen, the spritzer bottle and of course my twig. It can be any twig and I just use a pencil sharpener to sharpen the end of it to make it easier to paint with. Besides that I've got a couple of brushes, one quite smaller detailer brush and a larger brush. One brush that I've I also be using is not on display here but it's like a mop brush but I've got my HB pencil and also my watercolour paper with the framing tape around the edge. I'm using Winsor & Newton watercolour paper 300 grams with a knot surface. A full list of these materials will be in the description box below with some helpful links to where you can purchase them. So I'm using the Pentel masking fluid pen and before you use it give it a good shake and press down hard so the uh, masking fluid comes out and then you can freely draw with it. It's, it's a lot less messier than actually using the masking fluid in a pot, I find. And a lot of my students over the years have spilt, I don't know how many times I've seen masking fluid spilt all over the place. The only thing I would say on large areas, such as what I'm doing now using the poppies, probably the pot might be better because as you see here, I'm scribbling and putting the masking fluid on which is fine, it goes on perfectly fine. But as later on when I took the masking fluid off, there were little tiny gaps. So I could have maybe done this a bit better possibly, but uh, I just wanted to point that out. But besides that, everything else, these pens are great. The reason I'm using masking fluid is so when the masking fluid is dry, I can wet the paper freely and paint all over it without worrying about getting green on my poppies. I'll be using a lot of quinacridone gold. I'm using that with a little bit of turquoise colour here, but you can use cerulean as well. And I'm just making up a milky wash. As you can see, using this Windsor & Newton palette, it is quite dirty. And I quite like a dirty palette, especially using it for the first stages, the first washes. You get lots of lovely neutral colours. I'm also mixing up some yellow here as well. So I'm starting off, this is actually the uh, colour out of my water pot, a bit naughty but anyway it, did, it doesn't matter in this instance but I'm wetting the paper first then putting on some yellow this is the big mop brush I was talking about it's a Winsor & Newton um, sort of natural hair brush quite a cheapy sort of brush but great for putting on large areas of paint now I'm putting on a mid green here this is all wet into wet the colors all mixed together on the paper and it gives a lovely soft edge so I've got a nice dark colour here. I've actually put some sepia in with my green, the blue and the yellow. So you get this sort of more of a neutral brownish colour here. And what I've done here is I'm spraying it with my spritzer bottle because the paint was drying a bit and it wasn't moving as much as I wanted. And now I'm just tilting it, just letting it all run down so the colours blend and mix together nicely. So I'm using cadmium red. It's the red that came in the uh, Winsor & Newton paint box. So it's just that and I'm adding a touch of yellow just to make it a nice warm sunny colour. And I'm um, spattering the background here. The paint is thick and creamy and the background is sort of kind of not not as wet as it was but it's, it's not quite damp. And as you can see now some of those have given me backgrounds but I'm trying to create some nice texture in the background it's not actually in the pexels photograph you notice so i'm going a little bit off piste i sometimes i'll use a photograph but i don't like to copy it so the paint now has dried and what i'm doing now is i'm actually using some of these marks that i made from the spattering and i'm actually going to make some sort of medium sized poppies so you've got the tiny ones in the background and just pulling some of these shapes forward and what i like about the spattering is that i've got this randomness of where it's gone so I can choose those rather than sometimes you can have this uniform row of poppies I want to make it look more natural and the spattering has, has allowed me to do that 
So I'm using my twig here with a puddle of green. It doesn't really matter what green, so a mid green. And I'm just using them to paint some of the stems in for the poppies. I find this easier than sometimes using a brush because you're almost like you're drawing it on and you feel a bit more secure. So it's a really good tip and it feels quite nice to do as well. So I'm just gonna continue now putting in the rest of the stems, creating that little bit of detail. The other thing I'll do as well is start putting in some grasses in the foreground. I'm using a lot of quinacridone gold here with a touch of blue. Um, and also, you know, I love to spray. So I'm just giving it a spray just to soften it in areas. So I've let this dry and I'm now gonna start painting the main poppies using this cadmium red. So I'm painting wet on wet. So I've wet it first and I'm dropping in quite dilute colors because I'm painting the very lighter shades. Remember watercolor working light to dark. So I'm just dropping in different sort of color reds. I've added a little bit of yellow to some just to make it more orangey. And I'm just wetting again and then putting this orangey red color in, just varying the colors, dropping it in wet in wet. It's quite nice actually painting. I love poppies and I love painting them and, and doing them in this sort of style. Um, just pushing, pushing the paint around with water. It's just so lovely. I'm just putting a few more grasses in the foreground. Again, lovely quinacridone gold with a touch of blue. And I'm making this delicious green here with cadmium yellow. And you could either use ultramarine or a bit of Windsor blue or, you know, a cold blue. It really doesn't matter. But I'm painting in the seed heads now, wet on dry and just sort of putting that colour on, taking my time, because they can be a little bit fiddly seed heads. So with all watercolour paintings, working light to dark here, I'm putting in darker areas on the seed heads, on the stems, etc. I always say to my students, um, how do we, they, the question I get asked most is, how do I finish a painting? How do I know when, I, when it's finished and all this? And I always say that to finish a painting, it's darks and details. Make yourself stop painting mid-tones. Mid-tones ruin watercolour paintings. So I've painted that a little bit dark there, so I've just wet it with some clean water and I've just softened it with the tissue. So I'm working sort of damp into damp now. The paint's creamier and the surface of the poppies are a little bit more damp. They're not as wet. However, you've just seen, I've just chucked a load of water on. Typical me, I can't help myself. But anyway, it's damp into damp and I'm sort of softening edges. And I do love using my little twig. So you can see here, I'm scratching in to show the veins of the poppy. I mean, watercolor doesn't get better than that. You notice there's a palish poppy right on the top centre there and I'm just going to give a little bit more detail to it. It was almost crying out for some attention and I'm just darkening some of these other medium sized poppies by putting a bit of weight, a paint on and then softening it with some water. It's quite an effective sort of technique to do. So now I'm working wet on dry, I've dried off my painting and I'm working wet on dry with my large size 10 brush, using the tip as well here, just to get the dark of the petal, the petal that's nearest to us, because the light's on the petals behind. And I'm just painting this in now, just with this cadmium red, no other fancy colors, just that red. Just really taking my time, as you can see here, just taking my time, just thinking about where this darker red is. As you can see that I've just dropped a little bit of yellow in that red just to make it a bit more of a warmer colour there, just working my way to the bottom. So these poppies are the focal point, so it's, it's important now to give that the most amount of detail. So I'm just going to wet this here just to soften that edge. So I'm just using water just to soften that edge. And I'm using my twig again to kind of scratch into the paper to get the details of these veins. So 
So I'm just putting the final bits of detail now using my small size four sable pointed sable brush. These top bits here are dry, just putting the veins in now with the brush. Just the same colour, the cadmium red. I'm putting a bit of dark now just at the bottom where the stem is now and just dropping a little bit more red into that. You can use any dark. I've used a little bit of um, ultramarine with some mixed with some red or you could use a bit of Payne's Grey, it doesn't really matter. That's all damp into damp. So just putting a few darker grasses in the foreground. Again, you can just use a dark green, a bit of Prussian blue with some yellow, the quinacridone gold. I'm just putting a few final touches to the poppies, putting in the dark centers. going to put a little bit more detail now on my main poppies this is pretty much wet on dry but just softening the edges as I go just to make those those colors blend in I'm giving a little bit of spatter now to the foreground with that red and then some limey green just to give it a little bit of texture you don't have to spatter some people don't like spattering at all I love it because it makes me stop painting how can you how can you paint over spattering so it's a really good way of stopping. I'm taking off the tape now. It leaves a lovely white border, as you can see. It just makes everything look sort of quite nice when you finish the painting. I'm putting a mount around this now just to check to see if I need to do any more to the painting. I find this a really useful tool. So I know I said I wouldn't do any more painting after the spattering, but in this instance, after putting the mount on, I felt I needed to do a little bit more work and put a little bit more light in the foreground. I'm using my twig and I'm using my brush just to put some light grasses in. So I've used some Windsor & Newton gouache and added it to my green. I find that's quite a useful way of getting light watercolours. I don't like to do it very much. I'll only do it usually at the end of the painting or where I need to make a correction. So I hope you enjoyed that video as much as I did painting it. And I've got the finished painting for you here. Um, I've mounted it and I always think mounting a painting really helps you see whether you need whether it's finished or whether you need to do any more work to it. A lot of the questions I've had from you in the comments section is about how do you know when your painting is finished and I find this is a really good tip is to actually put it in a mount or just put the painting up on a shelf for a couple of days walk past it and if something shouts out to you that it needs doing it usually does but sometimes the best thing to do is just leave it you've finished so I hope that little tip's useful and I hope you've enjoyed this demo if you'd like to see any more videos like this don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already happy painting Bye for now.